financial independence, country shopping, van nomadism, security culture, ethical enclaves, crypto anarchy, legal interstices, survivalism. Join your host Shane and Kyle as they explore this freedom strategy known as Vaughn. You're listening to the Vani Podcast. And welcome to the Vani Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to coercion. I'm Shane and... I'm Jason. Sends government to the primary coercers upon individuals. This podcast and everything found on the website is covered by Bipcot. No government license. So allows reuse and modification to anyone except for governments and the bludgies thereof. Uh, you can learn more at Bipcot.org. So uh, welcome back, Jason. Uh, it's, it's always good to, to chat with you. How are things going? Uh, it's been a long week, man. Like Thanksgiving and and the family, and but uh, I'm I'm ready to get back to this Vonu thing and and get educating people in their uh, ability to limit their coercion. Right on, right on. So 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 I guess uh, any details? How, how was your Thanksgiving? Uh, they put pineapple bits in the sweet potato pie. All right. <laughs> Not I don't bad, need to huh? Into, I don't <laughs> need to go into detail, but there was pineapple bits in the sweet potato pie, like pineapple bits with marshmallows and candied walnuts and sweet potatoes and it was just oh it ruined it it ruined it like i understand why indians massacred um settlers it's it's because of this <laughs> it's because uh because the settlers put pineapple in the sweet potato pie absolutely abs i i <laughs> i wholeheartedly support their decision too oh man oh man yeah that sounds awful that really, that really, really does sound awful. You know what? Statists would say there ought to be a law, and you know maybe this is so bad that maybe there should be. <laughs> like their their justification was, oh well, I don't want to put sugar in it, so you're gonna sweet put potato the, pie. So you're gonna put genetically modified pineapples into it instead because that's better than genetically modified sugar. And pineapple still has sugar in it. It's a natural sugar. Oh my so, goodness. Like, this seems like a, a self de- self defeating, you know, argument. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well so I, I guess that's uh that's that's uh that's unfortunate, but uh, uh but so so time with the family, all that uh, all that was good. Oh yeah, I got to hang out with my nephews, uh which I don't see all that af- often and my brother and uh, went bowling. Uh, got beaten bowling by like two eight-year-olds, which I kind of feel bad about, but I don't also feel bad because I haven't bowled in like six or seven years. So yeah, you weren't a bowling pro or anything, right? <laughs> oh no, no, <laughs> no, no way. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, you know, uh, you know, it's uh, that's not surprising. If I played, uh, I I used to always like when I actually used to go, I used to get killed all the time. I was awful at bowling. Uh, it was just fun to do. So. Uh, not so much anymore, but <laughs> apparently some people still do it. You know, the older folks they just go get drunk and bowl. So, you know, maybe maybe it's fun. I don't know. I'm not really too inclined to go to go check it out. Uh, but uh, but I, I guess uh, I guess there it is. Uh, anything else you want to discuss before we uh, before we uh, get to it? <laughs> no, nah, man. Let's let's get going. All right, all right. So no, so no, no more discussion on pineapple and sweet potato pie. All right. Uh, so oh, today no. we uh, we wanted to uh, take a step away from the Vani publication to do a Q and A. You ask, we answer. The show notes, and there will be plenty, uh, can be found at vonnypodcast.com forward slash QA1. Uh, we've received a bunch of terrific terrific questions, and uh, we'll do our best to answer all of them. Uh, that said, if you have any that didn't make it into this episode, feel free to submit new ones. We'll definitely do more of these uh, in the very near future. Just email Shane at vonnypodcast.com, or uh, get a hold of me on Fashion Book, or if you have a question specifically for Jason, uh, you can just get a hold of him on, uh, on your uh, personal Facebook page, right, or Twitter. Yeah, uh, they can get a hold of me at Facebook or Twitter uh, at slash uh, J A S B O O T H E. Right on, right on. So, so for the listeners, I, I do want to just put this out there. For some reason, I don't know what's going on. It's never happened before. Uh, I'm not sure if it's something to do with the internet or what specifically it is, but uh, uh, but apparently Jason's cutting out every once in a while. So if that does happen, I'll 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 I'll, I'll have him stop and repeat it. But uh, you know I'm sure he'll get frustrated if it happens too often. And if it does happen too often, we'll have to figure something out. So uh, I guess just a little uh, little warning there. Uh, certainly do apologize, but I uh, got a, a jam packed informational episode for you uh, today. Uh, so any I guess preliminary thoughts before we get rolling? Uh, if I cut out, it's because they put pineapple bits in the sweet potato pie. That's that's got to be it, man. That's got to be it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it it knocked the universe off track, off off kilter, and we just we just gotta let it catch back up. 
Yeah, you know, maybe it'll send us catapulting into the sun. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, but all right, let's uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, and get to it here. So the the first question, I thought this was a good one to start out with. Uh, we talked about it in episode one. Kyle and I did, and uh, Jason's answer probably came out uh, you know through, throughout the course of this uh, of uh, of our intermission episodes. But uh, so Pete asked, and, and for the sake of volume, I didn't get permission. I didn't ask if uh, they wanted to be if they wanted their first and last names to be revealed. So I'm just gonna go with first names. Uh, just, uh, you know, out of respect for, uh, for the privacy here. So Pete asks, how did you each individually learn of Vanu? So, uh, it's not a very long story. Uh, it really isn't. Uh, this would have been around, uh, you know, middle of 2015 when we were, uh, you know, in the, in the middle of, uh, uh, actually was it, uh, oh, it was the middle of 2016, actually, I think it was. Yeah. Middle of 2016 when we were, uh, in the midst of, uh, the direct action series over on, uh, Liberty Under Attack, uh, Liberty Under Attack Radio. And, uh, Kyle found a couple of blog posts. Uh, you know, reviewing, uh, there was uh, one in, in defense of opting out, which was a, a review published by uh, the, the article and a review, or I, I guess a commentary uh, published by a guy named Wally Conger, who I eventually interviewed uh, on uh, Liberty Under Attack. He was uh, good friends with Sam Conkin and uh, saw a book review of, of, of Rayo's uh, first book, uh, Vaughn of the Search for Personal Freedom. And uh, there wasn't much on there. I mean, you, there was a very, very vague didn't really have any idea what it was about, so I went to Amazon and I found uh, I found the book, Bonnie the Search for Personal Freedom, and uh, I ordered it. It was a blind grab, didn't know what I was getting myself into, but uh, I read it, I digitized it via Liberty Under Attack Publications, uh, and that can be, uh, you can go, you can find that at bonniepodcast.com, just go to the free books tab, and uh, I digitized that, and uh, we talked about it in a couple episodes on the Direct Action Series uh, towards the end, and uh, then in January of this year, we started the Bonnie Podcast, uh, you know, to discuss these ideas and uh, to bring Vani back into the forefront because it certainly is a very unique uh, strategy. So that's kind of my answer to that question. How'd you uh, f- how'd you uh, learn of Vani, uh, Jason? Uh, through you, <laughs> actually, through uh, um, you sharing Vani podcast links on uh, Liberty Under Attack. Uh, I followed Liberty Under Attack. I, I used to share stuff to uh, my political page, uh, A Wolf in the Sheeple's World, um, and on a whim. I, I, I listened to one. I, th- I think it was May, June, sometime like that. I listened to it and um, just like like a holy rabbit hole, Batman. You know, it was just like something about it just just reached out and grabbed me and it's like, hey, you that you had previously uh, in all sense. Um, I ended up doing some research on my own, reading some stuff. I read. Vanu's or uh, uh, Rayo's book, Vanu: The Search for Personal Freedom, and and just like just like I I also I also help out with Ben Ben Stone, uh, Sedition, Subversion, Sabotage, Field Manual Number One. Uh, I I do some stuff for his Facebook page, making memes and stuff uh, from quotes from his book. And and on a whim, I made some for you, uh, for for you Vanu did, yeah. from. From Vaughn in the Search for Personal Freedom, and it just it kind of snowballed. Like you said, hey, you know this and that, and check this out, and hey, hey, can you 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 have a? Uh, I think you asked for people to edit, um, and I was like, sure, I'll help. And then one thing led to another, to another, to another, and I'm editing like whole publications <laughs> now, and now I'm part of the podcast, I guess. Right, right, yeah, yeah, and that uh, and that'll kind of lead into another question. But yeah, there's probably a uh, I'd say in total of, of what we've been able to acquire about ten Vaughn or Liberty publications from the '60s to the '80s. Uh, but yeah, you know, glad uh, glad we we're able to, to, to reach you all, reach you with Vaughn and uh, that she decided to uh, you know uh, uh, come aboard. Uh, certainly, certainly fantastic. So uh, so Pete, thanks for your first question. We got uh, Pete. Pete asked, uh, you know, he, he put I'd... forth quite a few really really good ones. Uh, but so you'll you'll definitely hear from him again. But go ahead, Jason. Uh, I, I wanted I wanted to jump back in there real quick and just say that the amount of information that we have discovered about Rayu and about Vanu, it's it's literally needle in a haystack. There's there's so much information out there, but there is so little information from Rayo and from Vanu. Like the the few publications that you guys have been able to acquire have been like literally almost exhaustive searches in order to find them you know just just happenstance like the 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 last set that you picked up with vanu book two i just happened to find on ebay and and sent shane mm-hmm. leak <laughs> and it was just like kind of stumbled across across it like there's no 
there, there's there's no Wikipedia for Vani, right? There's no link to twenty different books or or anything like that. You know, it's he's not Ray is not like Murray Rothbard. You know, he's not everywhere. Right, right. So so the information that you guys do have, the publications that you do have, um, they're they're literally worth their own weight in gold. Um, and and they are they are absolutely valuable, uh, invaluable to me. Right. No, of, of, of course, of course. And, it, and it's kind of funny you put it that way because it really was, I mean, I, we, I guess Kyle and I really have never searched out. I mean, there was a Vanu live, actually, no, I mean, I've, I've looked, I've looked endlessly for, for stuff, but I haven't really found anything. It's kind of like the publications have found me, uh, in a sense, uh, you know, uh, Derek bro sent me uh Vanu life, the, the link to purchase that you sent me the ones on eBay. Uh, Wally Conger sent, uh, sent me to buy that first book. And, uh, you know, just, uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of just how, like, it's kind of falling into my hands, which is uh, really, really interesting. Uh, you know, I think it's, it's certainly a strategy that, uh, you know, the libertarian anar 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 anarchist community uh, has needed for quite some time. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I think it's uh, certainly fantastic that we can, uh, you know, bring it back to the forefront and, uh, you know, grow this podcast and, uh, you know, bring it to people's attention. Because uh, if there's any strategy or any set of strategies that, uh, you know, could bring about personal freedom uh, or invulnerability to coercion, uh, it's certainly, uh, certainly Vaughn. So anything else there? Yeah, I think that, that pretty much covered it. Okay. Okay. So this one is from from Josh, and a really interesting question. Uh, he's got a specialty here. Uh, I know he's doing doing some stuff uh, doing some stuff uh, uh, for where he is, which I think is pretty pretty neat. Uh, but he asks, uh, quote, tree log inoculation for producing mushrooms without drawing attention. Uh, and that's a question. Uh, or other kinds of covert food production. In other words, secret agriculture. Uh, end quote. So. This is going to be an interesting one because uh, Rayo did mention in a couple of publications, I think once in Vani Book 1 and once in Vani Book 2, maybe maybe a couple more times scattered throughout, but the, the notion of crypto culture, uh, you know, large hidden plots of, you know, garden plots uh, where you could grow food, uh, you know, on so-called, you know, national forest, so-called public land, right? Uh, so he did kind of talk about that a little bit, uh, but he, what he I think he kind of at that time thought it would only be worth it for high value crops like marijuana. Uh, I don't think he really saw that it would be worth the time and the effort for smaller things that you could, you could just buy at the grocery store if you really wanted them. Um, now, as far as producing mushrooms, uh, this is, this would be different than uh, like like there's there's probably some wild spinach and such growing in national forests. But if you grab like a garden full of spinach, tomatoes, cucumbers, whatever else you can grow there, you know that's gonna stick out like a sore thumb. Like someone's tending to that garden there. What's going on? But with mushrooms, no, I don't think a lot of people are really specialized in mushrooms. So. If you were to, I guess, uh, inoculate mushrooms on on tree logs around your volume home bases, uh, I don't think you're gonna come across somebody who's like, huh, that mushroom shouldn't be here. That's a so and so strain. Yeah, that's that wasn't put. That was that was uh, you know put here. That didn't actually that didn't actually originate from here. I don't think you're gonna come across that very much. So as far as uh, producing mushrooms in a crypto culture fashion, oh man, I think it's got uh, you know great possibilities. Uh, I. With mushroom, mushrooms is a fantastic start. They're they're pretty easy to grow. They do have, they do have their, their tendencies, right? Uh, if if it's if it's too hot, they'll dry out. If it's if it's too wet, they won't they won't spore. Uh, what what it really comes down to, in in my opinion, on this is, uh, if you grow what is available naturally in the area, you're not going to stand out at all, right? If if you're in an area that has uh, blackberries and, and salmon berries and wild cabbage and things like that. And if you grew those, nobody's going to think twice, right? But if you're, you know, in 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 Bella Coola and you're growing, you know, and th there's a tomato plant, that's going to stand out a, a, a hell of a lot, especially right. in the national forest, right? Or if you're in Kalamath, uh, 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 the 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 Siskiyou region, and you're trying to grow, you know, jalapenos. That's a huge red flag. <laughs> but if you grow the things that naturally grow in the area, uh, you're going to go largely undiscovered, uh, uh, um, and and you're totally going to limit your your vulnerability, or you're totally going to limit your coercion uh, by doing that. Now, second to that, like cannabis, you you mentioned growing pot. It is a weed. It, it truly is a weed, and it truly does grow on its own. What attracts attention is large plots, right? If you were to have two or three plants, you know, over here and, and two or three plants, you know, up here in these trees and, and two or three plants down here in this clearing, um, 
and didn't have like any sort of pattern to it. Like it wasn't set, you know, uh, on a, on a on a triangle pattern or something like that. Um, being being on small scale, the authorities would largely ignore it because they're what they're going after is large scale. Um, I also believe that you could do uh, grow lights and and grow in a cave. Uh, you That's can do. Where I was going with it. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> uh, go go troglodyte and and underground. Um, the the pos the possibilities are are there with technology now. The the possibility to grow food where food should not be grown, um, or or without exposure to outside course of forces. Uh, the ability to do that is very high, but it is very selective. Uh, and what you grow, where you grow it, and how you grow it. Very good and well said. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you had more information. I, I, I've never explored mushrooms or anything like that before, so I I don't really have a whole lot of information on this. But uh, but again, you know, again, I'm I'm glad you're here to provide kind of the uh, uh the, I guess the the gardening angle, the, the stuff that I I'm not familiar with. But but yeah, you know, I, I think uh, especially kind of that troglodyte that troglodyte fashion where uh you're underground. Yeah, I think uh, you could pretty much grow anything you wanted to down there uh, as long as you're able to do it. Uh, right, as long as the uh, as long as the the vegetation or the plants would survive. So, uh, so Joshua, answered your question. Yeah, very very plausible, feasible, uh, and uh, you know mushrooms versus uh, uh, I guess uh, uh, vegetation that's that's formed to that area. Yeah, I think uh, it, it'd be very very easy to get away with, and I don't think it uh, it really raise any red flags. So, uh, so the answer to that question, yeah, certainly certainly possible. Anything else there? Uh, I one one more little quick point. I, I was used to the quote before. Uh, the nail that sticks out gets hammered. If you are growing large plots of land or lar large plots of, of plants, of, of cannabis, of tomatoes, of, of whatever else in, in, a, in a national forest or, or in a state forest, whatever, you're going to attract attention. Smaller is better. Small plots, sporadic um, – and just let them grow. I mean, plants plants grow naturally on their own. Leave them be. Tend to them very little. The the less you tend to them, uh, the less the less paths you create to them, the less ex the less exposure you have. Um, and yeah, that that's ultimately what's about is just small, tiny plots. And and I, I think you'll be okay because the government's not going to waste their time on a tiny little two or three plants. Right, right, yeah, and no, I, I I certainly agree. I certainly agree. Uh, okay, this next one uh, is from from Jared, and uh, this is a, another really great. I'm 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 kind of blown away. I've tried to do these before, Jason, but uh, uh, I guess I really didn't promote him too much. And it's kind of like I wonder if anyone has any questions. We'll see. And I really didn't promote it a whole lot, but uh, you know, I'm really pleased with uh, with the amount of questions and the quality of the questions. It really really shows me that uh, you know people are really thinking about this Vani stuff, and I think that's uh, that's pretty terrific. But Jared asks. How do you think Ray would make transactions today? FRNs, Federal Reserve notes, gold, silver, cryptocurrency, barter, or trade? Uh, and that's the end of the question. Uh, the short answer, all of them. <laughs> uh, that'd, that'd be the short answer. Uh, and uh, to, I guess for a more lap, for a more detailed answer, uh, FRNs. Uh, you know, there are some places where you have to spend FRNs, right? You have to spend dollar dollar bills. Um, now, uh, obviously, Ray wouldn't be caught dead with a credit card, so that would, you know, uh, that would relegate him to, to cash, uh, which, I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Sure, uh, you know, obviously, the, the, the other alternatives put forth are, are better options, but there are sometimes where it's unavoidable, right? Uh, you might need to spend, uh, you know, uh, cash or fiat uh, on some of the things you, you need to survive or some of the things that you're purchasing. So uh, I don't think he would, uh, you know, uh, uh, I don't think he would, uh, you know, nix FRNs off the table. I think it's uh, very, very hard to do that. Uh, the next one, uh, gold and silver, sure, yeah. I mean, if if he, if he was, uh, you know, trading with a, a, a Vanuan and like a, I guess, say a Vanu Association or something, uh, and uh, you know, they accepted gold or silver for for a transaction, sure. I think I think he would. I don't think there'd be any reason why he wouldn't utilize that. Uh, I think silver would be more practical because, uh, I mean, if you're trying to buy a loaf of bread with gold, I mean, you're gonna lose that shaving pretty quickly. Um, <laughs> um, so, and I guess another thing too, I think I think gold and silver would be lower on the list, namely because he 
was a wilderness venue and if, if he was alive today maybe he, his strategy would change a little bit maybe he'd you know be a van nomad or, or something like that but it would still be a, 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 a nomadic lifestyle so there'd be there'd be travel involved so i don't think he'd want to haul around a whole lot of gold or silver personally um so i'm sure he'd have some on him and if, if, the, if the opportunity arose where he could you know spend it i think he probably would uh and jason i'll, I'll let you put give your take uh, once i go through these um but uh cryptocurrencies yeah i think he'd be very much a fan of cryptocurrencies he talked about uh, there was one quote from Bonnie Book One where he talked about uh, an underground bank, uh, you know, transmitting transmitting uh, credits through the net or something like that. Uh, now I think he was talking about a radio net, like a ham radio net maybe, or something along those lines. But uh, but it sounds a whole lot, whole lot like cryptocurrencies. Uh, and he was an engineer, so he was a smart guy. He could have he could have figured it out. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, so as far as crypt cryptocurrencies, I, I think it would be very much in favor of the decentralized nature. He was very much in, in, in favor of decentralization. Uh, he would really like the the aspect of anonymity, uh, you know, with with uh, coins like Monero or Zcash, and uh, uh, I guess some of the other crypto note coins too. I think he would really be in favor of some of those things. And uh, you know, Ray was a pothead, so uh, if he couldn't, you know, get uh, you know his supply locally, uh, you know, I think Ray would be the type of guy to uh, you know order some stuff off the deep web with uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, so I guess, yeah, he would, I think he would certainly use cryptocurrency, uh, as long as it was user-friendly and the people that he was trading with would accept it. Um, and the last one, barter trade, sure, he talked about, uh, I think he talked about, uh, bartering in the Ethical Enclaves article, um, in Vani Book 1. So, uh, bartering services, uh, you know, so you can both avoid, uh, avoid the, uh, the theft known as taxation. So, uh, I think that's all I have there. Uh, what do you have, Jason? Uh, I th also believe that Rail would use all of them, um. He, he was he was all about limiting limiting his vulnerability to coercion. Well, if you're not going to try to buy, you know, a, a bag of beans with gold, right? If if you go to the grocery store and try to pay with gold, well, you're going to attract attention. They're going to call the cops. Blah blah blah. There's going to be coercion. Or, or, or most of the cashiers to say, "What's that?" <laughs> yeah, that also. Yeah. Uh, so I, I believe he would use Federal Reserve notes, and I do believe that. It, it would it would be a game to him. It would be like what can I get away with type of type of situation with trying to use, um, try trying using using FRNs when he when he could have used gold or or when he could have used crypto things like that. Um, the gold and silver. I mean, for some reason, people will always value gold and silver. It's it's stuck in oh, them. Yeah. It, it's 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 what they it's what they know. So they will value gold and silver. Um, it is a great barter item. It is a great, it is a great commodity. It, it is something that the value of it, which for some reason is, is valued in FRNs. It, it is the, the value goes up over time. Some people value it more than others. Um, cryptocurrencies. I believe that rail as an electrical engineer would be ecstatic about cryptocurrencies for their ease of use and because they're not regulated by the government they are not a government commodity they are not um, uh, a government currency i think he would be all about it he would love the deep net or dark web whatever you want to call it um i believe he would also uh be very much into trading them with other people uh buying and, and and selling for cryptocurrencies because of, as I said, they are not part of government. They are they are not a, a government, um, a government licensed product or, or whatever else. Uh, and barter, everybody loves barter. We do barter all the time. Crypt or uh, uh, Rayo was a big fan of it. He used it a lot. He talked about trading. Uh, labor, labor for money, labor for goods, uh, labor for labor, trading, you know, products for food. Um, so yeah, uh, Rail would use all of it. Rail would use all of it, but I think that he would be geeking like crazy over cryptocurrency. Right, right. In the first episode of season two, we we covered, uh, we uh, Kyle and I covered financial independence, and uh, you know, Rayo did recommend having a nest egg before pursuing Venuans or pursuing Vanu. And uh, I, I think he would be astounded by the the ability that, or I guess the the, the possibilities that exist with, uh, you know, cryptocurrencies in uh, speeding up financial independence. 
uh, financially independent early retirements, as well as, uh, you know, just a, a great way to invest and, and not just, uh, he talked about burying silver, uh, you know, burying, uh, you know, uh, dollar bills and caches, you know, scattered throughout, uh, you know, the Siskiyou region. Uh, you know, I think you'd be very, very uh, surprised at the, the possibilities there. And plus, uh, you know, you can fit uh, you can fit uh, 10 million dollars of cryptocurrencies on a flash drive, right? So if you're a nomad uh, or you're a perpetual traveler like uh, like say Pete Cisco, uh, you can have uh, you know all of your all of your finances on one flash drive. You don't have to carry around like uh, you know 50 pounds of silver. You don't have to carry around uh, you know your bartering goods. You don't have to carry around uh, well, et cetera, et cetera, right? So I think he'd be pretty, pretty astounded at the the possibilities that exist with cryptocurrencies, and then uh, in building uh, the second realm or building the the Vanu Association, kind of the, I guess the way that he put the second realm. Um, yeah, I think he'd be pretty surprised uh, <laughs> at at all of the possibilities that that are uh, that are available now, uh, especially with the cryptocurrency technology. But anything else there? Uh, yeah, I wanted to jump back in here again uh, with the uh, him being um, electronic engineer. Uh, and and he would be number number he he'd be incredibly into crypto, but he would also be incredibly into the idea of blockchain technology, the idea of a decentralized network, and so there's not one one agency or, or one entity or, or one person that controls all this information. I, I think I think he would he would greatly greatly love that. Oh yeah, 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 and I think that's where I was going with this, with the second realm or the Vanu Association discussion. Uh, the yeah, that the blockchain technologies can can certainly, uh, you know, provide for that. Uh, maybe not all immediately right now, but uh, but you know, in the future, I think there's a very bright future, uh, you know, available. But uh, uh, all right, let's get to this uh, this next question for P. We're doing pretty good on time, about half hour through. Uh, so this uh, so he says he asks quote What technology exists to facilitate secure communication between Venus? Y'all have already discussed OTR uh, off the record uh, and others, but some others may be included at privacytools.io. Uh, what tools would en would enable more off the grid Venus uh, Venus to retain connectivity from the power side to the network side? How about mesh nets activated? checked at a given frequency so as to not deplete power if others are nearby okay long question so first off privacytools.io fantastic website i put it in the show notes uh, i've been there before but i forgot how how great of a resource it is uh it really is really is terrific so privacytools.io uh you know lots of you know good tutorials walkthroughs uh you know vpns uh you know if you're looking for encrypted email and you don't want to set a pgp even though it's pretty easy to do i mean there are a lot of options there uh, on that site uh, you know whether it's uh, operating systems or uh, et cetera et cetera so uh great website uh certainly recommend it so to tackle that first one, uh, what technology exists to facilitate secure communication between uh, Vonuus? Uh, well, there's a lot of them. Uh, PrivacyTools.io has, has quite a few of them. Um, one that's not used very often now that Kyle and I used to use is something called Jitsi. Um, that's kind of like what we're doing right now on Skype, Jason. Uh, there's there's a lot of possibilities. There really are. Um, now, smartphones aren't the greatest route to go, but a lot of people are using Signal and Telegram. I think that's a lot better than just doing it out in the open. Uh, but yeah, there are endless I, I, almost endless. There, there are always, you know, new technologies coming out, uh, new encryption protocols, uh, and, uh, and and all of that. Um, so I guess for for more information on that, uh, we did do an episode on crypto anarchism, which I'll link in the show notes as part of season two. But uh, yeah, there are a lot of possibilities, and uh, I just uh, I'd recommend the listeners peruse privacytools.io um, and uh, you know really see how many options uh, there really are. Uh, you know, post Snowden world, uh, you know, privacy is uh, becoming important again. So I think that's uh, that's truly great, and the market is certainly looking for solutions uh, in that realm. But uh, Jason, anything on that first question? I think one of the things that a lot of people overlook uh, as technology advances is that they lose touch with the very, very simple methods of, of communication, of secure communication, things like like drop boxes, right? Um, a, 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 writing a uh, freaking letter. <laughs> yeah, write, writing writing a letter, putting it in a, in a drop box, not mailing it, you know, putting it in a drop point and, and having them check it later. Uh, simple spy craft gray man type stuff, you know, putting a little X on the on the on a particular bench on a particular day means that you want to meet up with somebody. Uh, you know, um, hanging hanging a, a a towel out the window means that. You know, somebody walking by, they see that towel, and that towel means something to them. The simplicity is is it, it's a lost art. Um, but as government advances technologically, 
the very simple methods of communication largely get overlooked. Um, so I, I would I would also gear towards that as well as the technolo technological aspects of it, like using Signal and Telegram and, and mesh mesh webs and, and things like that, mesh right. nets. Right, and, and you know, like that, that and that stuff, you know, when it's necessary, that is still used today. I mean, if you look at, uh, you know, some Hollywood movies, if someone's in trouble, you know, they say, hey, uh, like they, you know, they communicate through some sort of, uh, some sort of, you know, manner, and they say, hey, let's meet up here, or it's so, or they have, or they, they do use kind of drop spots and stuff, uh, or you know, they, they drop information at, uh, you know, they, they put information in their mailbox, whatever it is. I mean, when those things become a necessity, people, people do tend to use those if they have to. But I think you're right that. Uh, just because there are easier ways to communicate now, um, you know, like the the push of a button and then send on a smartphone doesn't it, it doesn't mean that those uh, those other options are not uh, are not important and yeah, uh, useful. An obscure for sale ad, in you know, in in a, in a Craigslist ad, right? And an obscure obscure, like, kind of like a hidden message, you know, in a, in a Craigslist ad accessible from all over the world that could mean a lot of things to you know very few many very few people yeah that's yeah, that's another interesting interesting uh, strategy yeah another another possibility so yeah there, there are a lot of ways to facilitate secure, secure communication between uh, venus uh, vanuas uh there are a lot of them uh and uh pete the the, the link the website you link privacy tools.io i'll say it again because i want you guys to go check it out uh you know that's uh, certainly a, a great place to to start and it seems like a great place to finish too it seems like a pretty uh pretty complete website uh you know for a whole bunch of different uh communication uh you know protocols and such so uh the second part of the question what tools would enable more off the grid uh, volumous to retain uh, connectivity from the power side to the network side how about mesh nets activated checked at a given frequency so as to not deplete power if others are nearby um that's a terrific question uh and that would be some we, we went into that a little bit uh, in the crypto anarchism episode but uh uh but yeah uh, i would point uh you know the listeners to von uh, in the direction of liberty under attack i interviewed jamin baconic a second time uh, I was. Put, uh, yep. I was just gonna bring his name up. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'll post. I'll post links to the uh, to both of those episodes uh, in the show notes of this one. Vonniepodcast.com forward slash QA one. And uh, uh, we talked about this, uh, you know, quite extensively as far as you know, like a van nomad, uh, like if the, it'd be possible for like a mesh network of like van nomads. Uh, like we 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 pre went pretty in depth with with this sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, certainly. You know, it, it's possible. Uh, it is possible with mesh networking. There has to be, you know, nodes to connect to. So, um, so yeah, that's cer certainly a possibility. Uh, and he even goes, uh, Pete actually even goes a step further here. And uh, uh, Jason, do you recall whenever we were talking about like Vani Week, uh, that Rayo put put out uh, like there was a flag that he would put up, like uh, uh, like there like it's you know sunrise and sundown. They they check you know 30 minutes before each or, or something like that. And if not, then they 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 meet up you know a couple couple times later. Well, it's kind of this kind of the same thing here. Uh, you know, uh, I guess a uh, a, Vanu a Vanuist community could say we're going to turn our mesh nodes at uh, you know at uh, high noon, and uh, at that time uh, you know we'll 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 do our communicating and, and all of that. Um, and that could be for security purposes, or it could be that if it's an off grid network. Uh, then power may be scarce, you know, electricity may be scarce. So, um, yeah, I think that's a great idea. I, I really do. And I, I hadn't really thought of it that far as far as, you know, uh, I guess the city, like preserving the off-grid energy, but, uh, but yeah, I think I'm, 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 I'm hoping Jamin listens to this, uh, uh, you know, already, but I'll definitely point in the direction of this and, uh, see if he has any further thoughts on that. But what do you think, Jason? Uh, I love the idea. I, I honestly do not know a whole lot about it, um, but I, I, I do love the idea, and I'm very intrigued, and I wrote that website down, and I will go check it out later. Um, but like like mesh nets, man, like being able to communicate with, with a group of people at a certain time, uh, I love the idea, right? It, it's, it, if, if you have like a, a sporadic time or, or a certain time, like in the month of December, like we will only talk on – Thursday at 1.30, right? That That's the only time. Thursday, 1.30 Eastern, that's the only time to log in. You know, in January, it might be Tuesday at, at 5 o'clock, you know, or, or something like that. If you were to do it like that, uh, keep it keep it sporadic, maybe change the times once in a while, change the dates once in a while. 
like it, it would it would be really really hard for someone outside trying to trying to get in, try, trying trying right. to trying to eavesdrop. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and you mentioned. Uh, uh, I mean, we've been talking about mesh networks. I mean, you want to talk about a really incredible uh, possible second realm. Uh, if uh, you know, like a, a mesh, like a Vanu association, like a mesh network community could get that going. And then, uh, you know, there's already been been talking, I guess, ways on how to do it, how to put blockchain technology on mesh networks. Uh, you could have your own financial system, uh, you know, using cryptocurrencies and, and blockchain, uh, you know, in your Vanu association. I mean, like, the, this is this is really game changing stuff. Uh, so, so yeah, Pete, this is. Uh, the technology is there. Uh, I think. I think the only thing we're really. I think the the only thing that I have to keep in mind a lot is that blockchain technology has only been around for like ten years, not even not even that. I don't think. So it's still in its infancy phase. So there are there are a lot of good people working on the mesh networking stuff. Jamie Baconic is one of them. He's trying to do a lot of other stuff on top of the mesh networks. Um, but uh, but yeah, as far as communication, that's existed for. I mean, since human beings have been communicating, you know, some of those some of those methods and strategies, and then obviously the. Uh, you know the the high technology side, like the the um, end-to-end encryption, the signal and telegram, and things like that, and the privacy tools.io. Uh, you know those are obviously uh, you know uh, encryption's been around for for quite some time. So those uh, so I think a lot of those are, are very secure, and then, then there are you know very secure ways to commu- for uh, Vanu is to communicate. So uh, anything else on that question, Jason? Uh, just just one more quick point. I, I've said it before. Uh, Government is largely a reactionary entity, right? They don't, they're 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 not they're not out there creating things in order to create ways to stop them, right? I mean, they have to capture existing data, capture existing technology, uh, and then alter it in a way that suits them. So as as technology advances, as we um, uh, advance technology. Government is is all is almost always a step or two behind, so if not five or six, <laughs> if if not, if not five or six, <laughs> if not more than that, it's it's the government after all, right, um, right. And I, th- so. I think that's another important thing to keep in mind. And then I, I have to I have to remind myself all the time, like why why are there not assassination markets like on the on the narrow blockchain? Why is there not uh, X Y or Z on the blockchain yet? I have to remind myself this hasn't been around that long. You know, uh, I hate the phrase because you know it's it's kind of a state, but you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. That sort of uh, uh, that sort of phrase. It takes it takes time for for these things to develop. And plus, uh, you know, people there there are some folks that really, I, I would say a lot of folks in the anarchist community, they kind of see the the outlier things like with the blockchain technology, like the mo- like it's not even the outlier, the most direct stuff, like oh, like you know, cr- like you know, transactions, cool, uh, or what's there, uh, like smart contracts. But I don't think a lot of a lot of anarchist libertarians see the actual long-term potential at personal freedom and and you know freedom for small communities uh, like a Vanu association. Uh, so I think there I think there's a I guess a, some some sort of a line that needs to be crossed where people really understand the possibilities that come with this technology. So yeah, uh, it's I, I think the technology is there. Uh, it's it's almost there. It's almost there. But uh, I think there's also kind of a human psychology aspect that uh, that needs to be overcome too. Right. To to quote Ben Stone, the market will kill the will kill the government when it's ready. There there's still there's still a market demand for government. So we just we just gotta wait for technology. It'll it'll kill the government when it's time. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Good deal. And I uh, got three more questions from Pete, but uh, I'm loving all of these. And uh, this will be a quick one. Uh, Pete asks, quote, could you frame Vanu in terms of a Venn diagram that incorporates other concepts, schools of thought? Uh, he continues, y'all have already defined like terms and discussed this, but the visual reference may be useful to some, end quote. Uh, I think that's a good idea, yeah, uh, comparing Vanu uh, in a visual format uh, with other anarchist schools of thought uh, and other, I guess, strategies. I think it's an interesting idea. I'm not sure how we would go about it. I think the easier one would be to overlap with various schools of thought. Um but yeah, I think this I think this could be an an, an interesting project uh, to, to to kind of uh, put together. So uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll I'll ponder that. I think it's a great idea, uh, and uh, I'll see what we can do. Uh, but uh, anything on that, Jason? It it, it would take it's it's going to take some effort to do that because Vanu is and it's an umbrella term, and there there's so many ways to practice Vanu that are unnamed. Um, 
Yeah, I but think, I, I think I think anything I put anything Kyle and I put together, or Kyle, you Kyle and I put together, uh, will be incomplete. <laughs> I think anything we put together will be. <laughs> I I think I think we could get enough down, uh, enough in, in in a visual form to attract attention. I I think that's very possible. Um, beyond that, like if you were to break down Vanu and in, into a Venn diagram, you it would be, like. You ever you, you remember when you were little the, those things called the spiral graph, right? There was like the, these little gear looking things you put the pin in and you follow the gear around the large circle. That's what the Venn diagram would be look like. Just a, a a whole bunch of little circles intertwined and tied in together, look like a big giant Celtic knot, and you wouldn't be able to tell which one which one's which. Um, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. So 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 I guess <laughs> I, I so yeah uh, I I guess. Uh, off the cuff here, I I I'd say yeah, uh, we could put we could put together something like that. Um, now for the for the more in depth thing, which is uh, which I think would be really good, you know, as, as far as trying to compare and contrast Vanu in visual format, where people don't have to listen to. We did one two episode uh, a, a two part series on uh, I guess uh, anarchic Vanu. Um, rather than having people listen to a three hour episode or a total of three hours for two episodes, uh, I think it would be uh, you know expedient to have a, a visual format of, of where Fonny is and where other, where uh, other things overlap. So I guess I'll put out a call here. Uh, this is beyond my uh, my Photoshop skills. I don't know I don't know how to actually go about doing this. But if anyone has any ideas on how to how to do something like that, uh, please uh, you know let me know shanevonnypodcast dot com uh, or you know contact me on uh, fascist book. Uh, but yeah, I think that's a really swell idea. Uh, again, this is Pete. Uh, he says, quote, besides Rayo, did others from the 1960s, 70s self-identify as Vanuus? Does other Vanu-laden content from that era exist? Yes and yes. Easy question. Uh, easy question. So uh, there was a, there, a, a publication, uh, Preform Inform. There was Vanu Life. Um, there was Vanu Link. There were there were probably a handful of publications that Rayo ran or contributed to that were all devoted to the subject of Vanu. Um, and Vanu Link specifically was linking up other Vanu, uh, other Vanuans. So yeah, there were certainly. Uh, I don't know. I don't have any idea on a number right now. Uh, I don't think we'll ever really get a, an accurate gauge on that, uh, unless we can, you know, find someone today that was a, a Vanuan back in the 60s and 70s. Uh, but yeah, I I can't give you an honest number. I have no idea what that number could be. Uh, but yeah, there was. Um, I mean, I, I would say if I had to guess, probably a few hundred to a few thousand, few thousand. Uh, and I'd probably say I'd probably say less than a thousand if I had to guess or if I had to speculate. Uh, but yeah, there were certainly other other uh, other uh, Vanuans uh, back in the 60s and 70s. And uh, yes, uh, there's a lot of other Vanu laden content, which uh, yeah, I kind of uh, <laughs> gave Pete a, an onslaught of links immediately after I asked that, after he posted that question. Uh, but yeah, to, to give you guys an example, last night actually uh, this is being recorded on November 29th. Last night I released uh, Vanu Life, March 1973. Low cost living notes is out. Going mobile is out. Self liberation notes is out. Ocean freedom notes is out. Vani, the search for personal freedom, uh, is out. And uh, Vani book two, which I think I might have already mentioned. No, Vani book two is also out as well. And there's a couple more that need to be published. But uh, but yeah, there's a lot of content. Uh, you can spend a lot of time going through all of this stuff. Uh, there were a lot of people, a lot of freedom pioneers back uh, in the 60s to the 80s, and uh, you know they didn't have internet uh, to to communicate uh, through uh, to, to to communicate with each other. So they had a lot of uh, publications. They'd have uh, they'd write to each other, and uh, let them know you know what, what was working. You know is this is a possibility for freedom. Uh, you know should we uh, move out to an, uh, an Antarctic iceberg or move down to South Chile? I mean they discussed these things. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of a lot of content stuff you. Will not find today uh, ever really discussed in uh, in libertarian and anarchist circles. So, uh, so yeah, I think those are easy uh, easy answers, right? Uh, yeah, there's 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 a lot of publications out there. It's a matter of finding them. Um, it's it's di they are difficult to find, but Vanu uh, Vanu March Life 1973. Uh, it. <sighs> And at, at the end of a lot of the pieces of writing, there are books that are that are listed, or there are publications that are listed um, that that people can look up. And it's um, the information is out there. It's, it's just a matter of finding it. Right, and I'll I'll take this opportunity too as well. I mean, it was I mean there there was only I guess one book on Vanu uh, via Lumpanics Unlimited, a, pub, a publication a publishing outfit. But uh, for for other related subjects, uh, I'd check out. Uh, uh, Loom Panics Unlimited. Uh, if you just Google Loom Panics Unlimited uh, book catalog uh, 2003, uh, theirs was the best book catalog in the world. 
And, uh, you know, they, they make that claim, and I think they, they deliver on it. Uh, but uh, for subjects related to this and some off-the-wall other things, or if you want to build a basement nuke or something like that, I mean they've got, uh, you know they've got a lot of uh, a lot of <laughs> some stuff they've gotten in trouble for. Uh, but you can find a lot of those publications on uh, on Amazon. Uh, some of them are quite expensive because they've uh, uh, Olympianics uh, was uh, they they closed their doors in 2006 I think. So I mean there's a lot of uh, really good content uh, there as well. Maybe not all Vanu laden, but uh, on subjects and pursuing Vanuans uh, could be highly valuable. But uh, all right, ready to move on to the last question. Probably the uh, oh man, this is this will be a fun one. But anything else there? <laughs> no, let's let's get on with that last one. Okay, so all right, so Pete asks again, and this is the best. This is a great a great question to end out on. We're gonna get a little philosophical here, uh, and also you know very pra very I guess foundationally uh, I guess uh, foundationally into uh, you know what it means to be a Vanuan. So Pete asks, what is the main goal of a Vanuist? To live free from coercion? To create, to live in peace, to not fuel things the person finds distasteful, to journey not as a reaction but to thrive. End quote. So, <laughs> I mean, the short answer to, to that, uh, you know, at least those, uh, you know, to live. So yeah, the the main goal of Ivanuis, we'll we'll cover that in a moment. But like the to live free from coercion, to create, to live in peace, all of those things I think are easy answers to those, and those are yes. But uh, what is the main goal? Um. <laughs> Well, the the main goal, if you get down to I guess uh, just the I guess the the grammar of it, uh, Vanu is to, to become as invulnerable to coercion as humanly possible. So I mean that's that's the main goal of a uh, of a, a Vanuist or, or Vanuan. So uh, I, what what do you have to say to that that first question? Uh, it it the Rayo's use of the word Vanu, right? The 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 root of it is invulnerability to coercion. I mean that 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 I you can't get more more explain more uh, uh you can't have a better explanation than that right right so that so that first one to live to live free from coercion yeah i mean that's the that would be uh that would be the main goal uh and and, and to uh and the next one to create uh yeah i would i would i would say there's uh i mean to, to create what well i mean there there are a lot of uh uh you know a lot of things that could be created you know a vanu association a second realm you know, a, 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 you know, create personal freedom. I mean, there are a lot of things that, um, that, that can be created through pursuing Vanuans. Uh, an iceberg mining community. Or a, uh, or a uh, lime <laughs> family in South Chile. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, yeah, to, to create, yeah, sure. There's, there's certainly some, some creation there, uh, to live in peace. Uh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Because, uh, if you're uh, if you're uh, coercing others, you're, you make yourself more vulnerable to coercion, right? So uh, to live in peace, I think, is a natural consequence of uh, becoming as invulnerable to coercion as possible. Uh, so yeah, I think that's certainly I think that's certainly uh, you know a goal of a of a, a vanuist or of a new one. Oh, absolutely! If you're trying to make yourself invulnerable to coercion, coercing somebody else, well, it kind of makes you a hypocrite. Number one, and number two. It does expose you to coercion because that other person is going to talk, <laughs> and and if somebody talks, somebody else talks, and then pretty soon you got helicopters flying over you. Right, right. So yeah, to to live in peace. I mean, that was something I was you know often discussed. One of the uh, uh, so uh, uh, vonniepodcast dot com forward slash vl. Uh, there's one article that Rayo wrote. Let me get it open real quick. I can't remember it off the top of my head. It's called uh, Ecology to Vanu. Technology to Vanu. Well, this is just kind of the head. There's not really a title. The title's a picture. So it's like ecology to Vanu, technology to Vanu, technology to ecology, Vanu to peace, uh, and Vanu to ecology. So I mean, the, like the whole whole peace thing is kind of interrelated with, uh, with with Vanu. Um, so yeah, to live in peace. I mean, that's that's kind of the goal, right? I mean, what did Rayo do out in his uh, polyethylene tent or in his uh, underground dwelling? Well, he lived at peace with nature, right? Oh yeah, if, if if you're not living at peace, right? If, if you're not actively trying to live at peace, well, then you're either being coerced upon or you're coercing somebody else, right? So that there's there's not peace there. I mean, if if you're not living in a way in which you are not coercing with anybody or not coercing anybody, not being coerced upon, then you don't have peace. Right, right. So I think I think that's just a, a natural consequence. Um, to not feel things the person finds distasteful. Oh, of course, of course. I mean, that's certainly an aspect of uh, of, uh, of Vanu. Uh, in the Ethical Enclaves article in Vanu Book One, uh, Vanu: The Search for Personal Freedom. Uh, 
where eth- where uh, Rayo came up came up with the concept of uh, agorism. Only the you title it ethical enclaves when when Conkin would have been in high school. Uh, for for any new listeners, yeah, I mean he talked about uh, starving the state. Uh, any 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 money not uh, or I guess any money retained from from the theft known as taxation. Uh, any money that uh, isn't uh, given to the state, uh, you know, and in, and in, uh, and directly benefits, you know, all of society. Uh, it benefits uh, less money to spend on war, less money to spend on uh, pursuing victimless crimes, uh, victimless criminals. Uh, I mean, yeah, to, <laughs> and to uh, you know barter and trade and use gold and silver uh, rather than uh, Federal Reserve notes. Uh, yeah, I mean, to to not fuel things a person finds distasteful. Yeah, it's certainly an aspect of uh, of volume. Uh, ab- absolutely. You know, to, to quote Derek J., uh, Derek J. Freeman, he says that uh, uh, if Starbucks dropped bombs, I wouldn't go there. I wouldn't shop there. The government right. is dropping bombs. Stop supporting them. <laughs> right. Live live in a way or try to live in a way that limits uh, uh, that, that that limits your exposure to the state, limits your feeding the Leviathan. Um Starve the beast, man. I mean, that—that's ultimately what it's about: is starving the beast and living free, and and trying to live peacefully. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how right. else to say it. Right, right. So, so this last portion of this question: uh, to journey not as a reaction, but to thrive. And this is the main difference between survivalists and preppers, and uh, vonuists. And there can be survivalist, pre- survivalist prepper, vonuists, sure, but. Uh, but survivalists and preppers are they're, they're waiting to react to a to, to some sort of a, a dangerous situation. Um, so yeah, that I mean for, for for most of those folks it would be a reaction. Um, but to thrive, yeah, but but to thrive is a lifestyle change to to really pursue that invulnerability coercion to really pursue freedom, um, to, to really thrive in, in, in such an environment whether it's uh, you know uh, in the wilderness if you're pursuing wilderness fauna or van nomadism, uh, or if it's in a Vanu association to, to thrive with uh, uh, with your your fellow uh, Vanuans. Uh, and, uh, you know, developing that second realm. So, yeah, certainly to thrive. I think that's a really, really great way that he, he asked that question. Uh, yeah, uh, su- survivalism prepping, uh, dis- discussing anarchism on Facebook uh, or, or social media, reading books, you know, quotes, doing podcasts such as this. I mean, they are they are Vanuism. I don't, I don't – they're, they're not Vanuism in action. They're, they're like Vanuism – uh, preparation, right? It's more, more spreading the philosophy, not necessarily yeah, the, the, the action it's, it's, portion. Yeah. yeah, it's it's philosophical, not not uh, action, right? And, and living in the woods in a, in, in a polyatent or seasteading or or van nomadism or or uh, ethical enclaves, you know, um, purposeful communities. Things like those are those are the very things that we talk about all the time. Uh, put into action. Uh, and that that's that's what Vanu is. Vanu is the action portion of the philosophy of of anarchism. It's it's yeah. about it's about limiting your coercion, being as free as possible, living your life uh, how you want, uh, in, in a way that doesn't tread on on the freedoms uh, of anyone else. Right, right, and, and and this is a great opportunity to bring this up, but uh, but you know I. I so there are obviously, uh, you know, a lot of anarchist libertarians who still follow the news cycle, and uh, uh, there's a lot of reactions to that, uh, obviously. <laughs> and uh, there, there's a, there's a lot of reaction to uh, even being on fascist book, which I, I I'm, I'm trying to get better at. I'm getting a lot better at. It. I don't just spark up, you know, debates every single night because I'm I, I get I, I get pissed off or something. I don't do that anymore, thankfully. Um, but a lot of a lot of this stuff, uh, a lot of this stuff is kind of reactionary. Uh, and it doesn't uh, necessarily uh, uh, translate into thriving. Um, so I guess a recommendation I would have is uh, obviously don't become complacent. Don't become complacent. But, uh, but you know, dive into the various Vani publications that, uh, that we've released on the Vani website, vanipodcast.com, and uh, really focus on all of the things that were presented there, all of the, the potential solutions uh, uh, posited. And... You know, really try to get into that uh, that that Vanu mindset outside of the state of surveillance society, and really try to re- really really contemplate and think deeply on well, what is it that you really want? I mean, what 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 sort of strategies appeal to you? Uh, is there anything really really uh, you know appealing to you that that, that you find in these publications? Uh, again, don't become complacent, but I would recommend you know <laughs> really really digging in uh, to 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 all of the stuff that we've been able to to to, to I guess discover and, and release to you guys for free. Um, and really try to figure it, figure out what uh, what will lead you to thrive. 
Yeah, we, we talked about it. Or I, I mentioned it earlier when the first time I listened to one of your guys' shows, uh, yours and, and, and Kyle's show, um, back in May or June, there was something about it that it 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 kind of it kind of reached out and grabbed me, and it caused me to read the book. And after I read the book, I listened to all the podcasts before that, and I've listened to every single one since. Vanu makes sense, right? That's I, I tell any, anybody that that I've talked to about this. That's the number one thing that I tell them. It makes sense because you're never going to vote for freedom. You're never going to overthrow the government and install some sort of anarchism. You're never vol- – libertarians are never going to win, period. That's not going to happen. Thank God. <laughs> right? I think – and people have raised this concern before, <laughs> before too, but I mean, oh gosh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> like uh, the, the possibility that you know libertarians might be the most tyrannical. Uh, you know, if uh, those political crusaders, oh man, you know, I I wouldn't put it past them. A lot of these people are just psychopaths. Um, yes, yes, they're it's... they're closet fascists. Um, yeah, but go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, like I was saying, um, uh, you're you're never gonna vote for freedom. You're never gonna overthrow, overthrow the government, and 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 whatnot. You're never gonna a libertarian's never gonna be president. What it comes down to is the only actions that you can actually control in regards to your own freedom is how much you expose yourself to the coercion of the government and and those that have uh, uh, bad intentions. Vanu is limiting your coercions to the very things that you are so adamantly opposed to that I am so adamantly opposed to. Van nomadism, wilderness vanu, uh, sea study. These these are practical applications of the very philosophy that we as as anarchists um, uh, that that we tout. Right? I want to be free. Freedom's never going to come from government, so the only option for me to be free is to seek my own freedom. Vanu is that in action. Indeed, indeed. Um, so, so anything else? Uh, anything else there, Jason? No, I'm. I, I, I. There's nothing else that we can say. If, if, just read the book. Read the book. It's it's only like 200 pages, um, or something. Like, it's it's it's, it's like not a, thirty. Yeah, it's yeah, like it's, 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 yeah. It, it's not a long read at all. It's a Shane said it's 130 pages. It'll take you a day. Read it. Read it. You know, an an hour. Or listen an to hour, it. Yeah, or listen to it. Listen to listen to it. Read it. If it doesn't grasp you, if it doesn't make sense, I don't know what to tell you. I I I I, I don't know what to tell you at all. Yeah, right. I, I I certainly agree. I certainly agree. So so I guess the closing question here, and uh, you know I, I can't think of a better better way to close out the show is, you know what what will lead to, what 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 looks what does a thriving uh, life look like to you? Does it look like uh, pursuing venuance? Uh, and uh, and a band does it does it uh, look like a bonding association? What does it look like? Uh, and then uh, I think the next question would be, what steps do you take uh, to to get to that uh, that thriving life? And with that said, bondingpodcast.com. Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you next week.